Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the campus of Tabor College in Hillsborough, Kansas for tonight's uh, Tabor Classic matchup. The Blue Jays welcome their guests, the Houston Tillotson Rams, for what promises to be a great night of college basketball. My name is Adam Suderman, and joined tonight by Isaiah Cohens. We'll be uh, taking turns on some color and play-by-play -play here on the Tabor College Blue Jay Network. The Blue Jays entered tonight's contest with a 2-0 record, and Houston Tillotson is 0-3 to start the year. We're going to take a quick break here, and when we return, we'll go portside to our uh, PA announcer for tonight's prayer and starting lineups. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsborough or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and... All right, welcome back, everyone. Again, tonight's broadcast here from the Tabor College Classic. My name is Adam Studerman, and I'm joined by Isaiah Cohen's and we'll be doing tonight's play-by-play -play in color. So again, tonight's matchup, uh, Houston Tillotson 0-3 to start the year, Tabor 2-0 uh, going into their home uh, home opener here tonight. Isaiah, what are you excited about here uh, with the Tabor's home opener? Um, I'm just excited to, to finally see the team play at home in front of in front of their fans. We have a pretty good showing tonight. Uh, the gym's pretty packed and uh, I think Tabor's off to a really good start to the season and I'm just excited to see uh, they can keep that momentum rolling. Absolutely, and uh, a lot of new faces that we'll be talking about throughout the game uh, for the Blue Jays uh, to introduce you to some of the new players. Uh, actually, four starters are new to Tabor this year, so we're going to pause here for the prayer and the national anthem, and we'll be back with you here in just a minute. The PA announcer will take over.
Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Tabor College Gymnasium here for the nightcap of the Tabor College Classic. Day one here from the campus of the Blue Jays. We'll talk just here a little bit about our starting lineups, as you saw on your screen. For the Rams, it is Con Chal, Austin Chapman, Tav Tavon Anderson, Jalen Williams, and Fabian Shelton. Again, that is Chal, Chapman, Anderson, Williams, and Shelton for the Rams. And for the Blue Jays, gotta love our now uh, the energy here from PA announcer Nate Howard. We'll tell you a little bit about the Blue Jays here. Uh, since, like I said before the game, uh, we've got four new starters for the Blue Jays this year. Uh, Thatcher McClure being the lone returning starter for the for the Blue Jays. Uh, Tabor's leading scorer last year, and uh, will definitely be a big part of the Blue Jays here in uh, his sophomore campaign. So, again, for the Blue Jays, we'll go, we'll run through them all, and then we can talk a little bit about each one. So. Uh, We've got Caleb Crane, a junior from Simsboro, Louisiana. We have Jack Vaugh, a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina. Jake Proctor, a freshman from Heston, Kansas. Thatcher McClure, a sophomore from McKinney, Texas. And Kenyon Holcomb, a junior from Tomball, Texas. Again, for the Blue Jays, we've got Crane, both. Proctor, McClure, and Holcomb. So Isaiah, just curious to get your input. When you, anytime you have four new starters, what are you uh, intrigued by when uh, you look at this, uh, trying to work a, pretty much a whole new starting lineup together? Um, I think whenever you look at the lineup having four new faces uh, for the program, and then you look at that record at 2-0, and that tells you that these guys have, have been putting in some work and they're having some pretty decent team chemistry up until this point. Um, so I think just having some new faces, uh, it's important that they keep playing that the way they are. And, and that gives that gives the program some good hope there, some good energy. Uh, For sure. For sure. And uh, by the way, these are brand new uniforms tonight. Never been worn. First time I think that the Blue Jay uh, men have had these baby blue uniforms. Got to say they look pretty yeah. good from up here. The baby blues look pretty sweet. So we've got at the tip, it looks like we've got Thatcher McClure and Fabian Shelton for the Rams. The Blue Jays win the tip and both finds Caleb Crane, Tabor's new point guard here in 2023-2024. So Tabor will be aggressive in their offense get up and down the floor. McClure drives to the rim, is unable to connect, but Crane grabs the offensive rebound and will go to the line for a pair. Yeah, with what you said about uh, Tabor, Tabor being really aggressive on offense, that was one of the things I was talking to some of the players about is that they're gonna be a really aggressive team and uh, in order for them to win uh, championships, they're gonna have to uh, perform defensively. That's gonna be the game changer for them. Absolutely. I mean, this the KCAC is uh, getting deeper by the year, and so uh, you got to have a lot of weapons. You got to be able to play fast because uh, there's just so many great athletes in this conference, mm -hmm. and uh, got to be ready to roll. So every game in, game out, non-conference or conference play. So Crane hits both free throws, and we'll get the Rams' first possession here. Shaw brings the ball up the court. So he finds Jalen Williams here over on the wing. So his jumper is off, rebounded by Jake Proctor. I tried to go back and see if these two programs have played at any point a little hard, just because uh, their leagues are uh, spread far apart. So we'll. Be curious to find out if this matchup's ever happened. And McClure's three is off from the corner, and it looks yep, it look off the backboard, so it will be Rams basketball. Yeah, another thing I see is uh, Jake Proctor. He's a he's a freshman starting early in the season. Um, 
But, you know, that's a really another good thing for the program, I think, for the future. The fact that he's able to start this early in his career. 100%. And Proctor is a, a name that is familiar to a lot around here, uh, being a Heston Swather. So a little bit of going to play college basketball in the hometown or in the town of his high school rival. But Proctor, uh, just a fantastic career at Heston High School and a huge addition for the Blue Jays here in 2023. So great job by Crane defensively, and he finds Proctor in the fast break. So tries to find Holcomb for a little alley-oop, but looks like it will remain Blue Jay basketball. Isaiah, we were talking pregame about uh, Taylor's defense, and, or just a little bit about um, the, how much intensity these guys want to play with, and especially right. when you look at 69 points in overtime, they kept they held down to. What do you think will be some of the keys defensively when you look at what Tabor's put out on the floor? Um, some of the keys, I think, is, is obviously just being able to slow the game down whenever it calls for it, being able to speed the game up and put pressure on the other team as well. Uh, yeah, and, and the Blue Jays are playing a lot of bodies early, so uh, I think they're definitely trying to find those rotations. And uh, speaking of that speed, McClure comes back on defense and nearly forces a ram turnover. That was Caleb Crane, by the way, uh, for the Blue Jays' last basket. The uh, junior uh, showing his uh, his ability to the home crowd here early. Jake Proctor will be called for the first Blue Jay team foul. So Tabor's defense doing its job here over the first three minutes, keeping the Rams off the board. And uh, that rebound grabbed by Austin Chapman, but he will be called for the over the back. So it'll be Blue Jay basketball. Coach Matt Warren in his second season here with the Blue Jays, uh, coming from uh, Warner University out in Florida, uh, just a lot of excitement for uh, the team he's assembled here in year two and just trying to just build this program uh, into the into the future in a very deep and talented KCAC like we've been talking about. Shelton goes into the body of Holcomb, but he will draw contact and will head to the line. Also the Blue Jays, number 15, Kenyon Holcomb, his first, team second. Tell you what, Isaiah, the first thing I noticed is just a lot of length for, for Houston Tillotson. Oh De yeah, definitely going to be uh, something to prepare for in the paint on the on the on the glass. Shelton, this is his first. It remains four zero here as we just uh, climb inside the third minute of tonight's game. He hits the second. Checking in for the Rams, number 22, Khalif Alim. Coming in for the Rams, we have number 22, Khalif Alim. And I forget if we met, didn't mention this earlier tonight, it is almost a brand new Houston Tillotson roster. They signed, I believe, 11 new players coming into this year. And McClure, which by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Thatcher McClure, as he hits that three, he was the third best three-point shooter in the KCAC last year at 42.9% as a freshman. So a welcome sight here early as uh, the sophomore connects from deep. And just like that, McClure grabs the rebound as the Blue Jays retake possession. McClure drives the paint and he connects. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to have to defend 6-7 driving to the lane. <laughs> so the Blue Jays out to a 9-1 lead after five points from Thatcher McClure. It will take a, it's a Houston Tillotson timeout here as they try to regather here with 16.07 left in the first half. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.
Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local Welcome back to the campus here as we uh, begin hit, hit the floor for some more action. And uh, Isaiah, would uh, you like to thank some of our sponsors here for tonight's broadcast? Yeah, Tabor College would like to thank our tournament sponsors for helping make this event possible. Hillsboro Hometown Pharmacy and Hillsboro Ford. Hillsboro Hometown Pharmacy, a full service pharmacy, is serving Hillsboro and the surrounding area. They're now offering immunizations including flu, RSV, COVID, shingles, and more. Proud supporter of Tabor College Athletics, please be sure to visit us at 507 North Ash in the Hillsboro. Hillsboro, Hillsboro Ford is a locally owned Ford dealership since 1955 and a proud sponsor of Blue Jay Athletics. They're a full service automotive dealership for all of your vehicle needs with a master certified service department and a complete inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles available as well. Hillsboro Ford can be found in downtown Hillsboro or online at www.hillsboroughfordkansas.com. Thank you, Isaiah, for uh, recognizing these sponsors here tonight who help us bring Tabor College basketball to you here through the Tabor webcast YouTube live stream. So Tabor's defense, Coach Matt Warren's got to be awfully thrilled so far when you look at a just a single point here on the board. And wow, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> McClure was his uh, acknowledgement on the KCAC All Freshman team was was uh, definitely warranted, and he is off to a great start here in year number two for the Blue Jays. I think that also is seven straight from him, if I if I remember right. Blue Jays are also doing a really good job in the pain of, of not giving any space to those those longer um, uh, that longer team on uh, for Tillotson. Being yeah. really aggressive on defense. They are, and um, they like to get up and down the floor, but Tabor's done well at combating it so far. In fact, Houston Tillotson 0 for 7 from the field here through the first six minutes of the game. Any coach will take that. Right. Looks like we will get Tabor's third team foul on Cade Hemmer. Senior from Oakley, Kansas, who's uh, just been such such a fixture in this program here over the last few years, and still a key cog here as we enter the new season. I know a lot of the players talk about his leadership and what he's meant to this team here in the early parts of the new year. So Aboba goes for the offensive board. Defensive board, sorry, my apologies there, but uh, the Rams are able to corral it and get on the board with their first field goal of the game. And that's a freshman for you, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Belk, just another dynamic weapon that's going to be so valuable for the Blue Jays this year. If that name's familiar to anyone here closer to Hillsboro, that's because he played his high school ball at Bueller before moving out to Wilmington, North Carolina uh, here or for his senior year of high school. So he was the 4A player of the year uh, by Sports in Kansas as a junior at Bueller High School. So between Proctor and both, there's just so much to be excited about when you think about starting two freshmen. Yeah. Isaiah, just tell us a little bit. I know you're on campus with these guys on a more regular basis than I am. Just what's the feel in the early going when you talk to some of these guys about the chemistry and what they're looking forward to with this team? Um, they're just excited. Uh, it's, it's early, obviously, and, and it's hard not to – uh, get too far ahead of yourself um, whenever you do have a lot of transfers. I know on the baseball team we have a lot of transfers and a lot of new talent, um, but with the basketball team it's the same thing. And uh, 
it's just really important to be where your feet are and to keep keep one foot in front of the other and build every single day and just keep working at getting better and, and building those bonds. Yeah. No, and I mean, it's just been impressive what they've done here. You know, you think about your home opener, I think some nerves, home crowds excited to watch you play, and uh, the Blue Jays have looked ready to go here through the first seven plus minutes. Definitely. They look really composed right now, um, despite all of these fans here. Always good to see a full gymnasium here uh, for Tabor's home games. And just so you know, if you. Uh, couldn't make it out to tonight's game. There will be a full day of basketball again tomorrow as the second day of the Tabor College Classic. So we'll tell you more about those matchups here later tonight. So you'll have a chance to see them. If you're in the area and you want to come watch the Blue Jays, uh, they will be at home again tomorrow. And we'll talk about those matchups here later tonight. So Charles Hallman makes both free throws. Or is that just one? Maybe I missed the second one, or missed the first one. So, Jane Miller, also another freshman. It seems to be a pretty common theme yeah. here for the Blue Jays. An errant pass as he hits the floor. And uh, he will get called for the foul. Maybe just a few freshman jitters there, but no harm, no foul. So that is Tabor's fifth team foul. It looks like we are going to get a timeout here, a full timeout from the Blue Jays. So 13-7 here in the early goings of tonight's nightcap between the Blue Jays and Houston Tilton. We will be right back after our word from our sponsors. At Baumgars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need when you At Baumgars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt Power Tools. We are back here from the Tabor College Gymnasium. It is Tabor 13, Houston Tillotson 7 here with 1228 remaining in the first half. We've got another new body on the floor for the Blue Jays. That is another freshman. That would be Jackson Bear. So, yeah, it looks like already... Tabor's gone 10 deep in less than eight minutes of the first half. So pretty impressive, uh, kind of showing some of that depth that they've created here in year two under Coach Warren. So Khalif Aleem hits the floater in the lane to bring it to down to a four-point Tabor lead. Yeah, not, not a bad luxury when you're able to rotate 6'8 post players like the Rams can in the paint. They're going to pose a threat, no question, uh, in the lane. So we'll see if we can maybe the Blue Jays can get uh, get them into foul trouble, but it's going to be a tall task, no pun intended. So Hallman takes it in, hits a kind of a little bit of a lucky shot there, but hey, if it falls, everyone's happy, at least for the Rams that is. So uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, a Houston Tilton run here to cut it down to two point, a uh, two point Tabor lead. So a little bit more energy coming from the Rams bench here as they have uh, withstood Tabor's early 11 to one lead. So Hemmert's three is off, rebounded by Austin Chapman. And for those who uh, aren't familiar with Houston Tillotson, you know, based in Austin, Texas and a member of the Red River Athletic Conference. So playing most of their uh, their games against schools in Texas, Louisiana, and across uh, that part of the country. So just like that, it's a Rams lead. So this is a 13 to two Rams, uh, Rams run here after Tabor opened an 11-1 lead to start the game. So Tabor will have to recalibrate here as the Rams have gained a lot of confidence here. Yeah, that Rams defense seems like they're playing with a little bit more assertiveness here. And, and yeah, they, they are. Their coaches are a little happier uh, after these uh, last few minutes than the first five. Oh, 
pretty impressive when you think about it because uh, like we mentioned before the rams uh largely a new roster uh having to sign 10 11 new players and you wouldn't think it you know this is their fourth game but they there is some cohesiveness there for them already which is impressive when you bring in nearly a dozen new players so and like that it's now a three-point ram lead so looks like uh coach warren will sub in some of his starters here as the ram lead grows So Thatcher McClure will go to the line. Joseph Cormier, a junior from Houston, Texas. And you will hear that often throughout tonight. I believe, I don't have the roster right in front of me at the moment, but I think nine players from Houston on this Houston Tillotson roster, which, you know, Houston Tillotson, players from Houston. Sounds pretty fitting if you, if you ask me. So. And for the Blue Jays, number two, Jack Bowman. So McClure misses his first free throw. He will get a second here to try to cut into what is now a Rams three-point lead. Also in for the Jays, Kenny Fulton. Coach Warren seems uh, not too concerned quite of yet, but right as I say that, they sink an 18-footer and uh, a look of kind of confusion, maybe wondering what happened, what's happened defensively here after a, a rock solid start from Tabor. Now it's a, again an 11-1 lead has now uh, fallen to an 18 to 13 deficit. Make that 20 to 13. So all Houston Tillotson here as they have uh, withstood uh, Tabor's early push. Seems like they've they've been getting out in transition, and it's been something Tabor. While they were able to defend it well early, they definitely have uh, regained uh, being able to do just about anything they want to do at this point. Mm -hmm. Coming in for the Rams, we have number twenty, R.J. Shepard. Yeah, both teams playing a lot of bodies here early, but. Not too uncommon when you think about this early in the season, trying to figure out what rotations you want to use. So, yeah, Isaiah, I mean, what if you look at Tabor's defense here, I mean, is it just simply just uh, uh, Houston Tilton just capitalizing on, on missed baskets and getting out in transition, or what do you think it's going to take for Tabor to kind of cut into this a little bit? Um, yeah, I think I think they're just taking advantage of, of what Tabor has given them and uh, – They definitely look like they're they're playing a little bit different uh, than they were in that first five minutes uh, defensively. Um, maybe need to slow down a little bit and, and regroup and just get back to what they were doing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, sometimes you certainly aren't out there to get fouls, but the aggressiveness uh, for Houston Tilts and going for that rebound, um, they're definitely playing uh, with quite a bit more energy here, here in the last couple minutes. Jake Proctor, that is that dynamic scoring that uh, that he offers, being able to score off the dribble uh, like that. Just, again, as a true freshman, uh, just such a, will be such an integral piece for the Blue Jays here over the next several years. So, I think Tabor, if they can settle into a half-court defense, that will definitely work in their favor. Transition has not been their friend here of late. Crane takes it right to the rim, and a good attack on his part because I think just about every time they've been able to get to the rim, they're able to draw contact. Right. Yeah, after missing their first seven shots, Houston Tillotson now seven of their last 12. So definitely uh, shooting at a much higher clip. And uh, Three-point shooting has not been either team's friend here on the early going. Just a combined uh, would be two for nine. So Tabor being one of six uh, by itself at this point. So a lot of transition basketball and uh, getting to the rim. So some foul trouble might become a bit of an issue here as both teams are. are uh, Houston Tilton at 16 fouls, Tabor at five. A lot of a lot of uh, yeah attacking the lane on a regular basis, which will. Uh, Definitely uh, rack up some fouls throughout the game. So Khalif Aleem with his second basket for the Rams as their lead jumps back up to four. A 
Looks like we're going to get a push on the Rams. And not a bad luxury when you have a 6-7 guard forward who can uh, take it to the rim like that. So that is the first on R.J. Shepard, team foul number six. Coming in for Huston Tillotson, we have number zero, Charles Hallman, junior from Modesto, California. One of the few Rams not from the state of Texas. You know, I definitely think uh, for those Texas programs across the board, they don't they don't have to. They have that luxury of not having to leave the state very often um, for recruiting purposes. Always um, nice to get try to play close to home too. Right. And I know there's Houston and uh, are in Austin are not next door neighbors by any means, but just a, a short day's drive for a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. Fellows on the ranks, number five. Two. His second, so team, seven. team foul number seven on Houston the Tillotson, the three. second on Tavon number Anderson. Two, Jack Voth will head to the line. You know, one of the things I was impressed at, you know, you look at Jack as a 6'6 guard forward. Uh, you know, last year at his high school team, I was able to find his numbers. He shot nearly 80% from the free throw line and uh, probably having to play um, a lot in the paint and also it's just always good when you can get a guy who can attack the rim like that and be able to knock down his free throws on a regular basis. So between both and McClure, it, I don't know about you, Isaiah, it just seems like they play such a similar style. Yeah, yeah. I also see that uh, both led the uh, that conference in, in rebounds as well. Definitely a, a complete player, you know, averaging 18 and a half. Uh, as a senior out in uh, Hoggard, Hoggard High School in Wilmington, North Carolina. Shout out to anyone in Wilmington who might be uh, tuned in tonight. But uh, like we said earlier, Jack originally is from Beeler, Kansas, which is a short jog here from Hillsboro. And I thought as a junior averaging 22 and 10, and again, was the 4A player of the year here from by Sports in Kansas as a junior. So a very gifted basketball player who we're all excited to watch here as his career uh, takes off here. So 25-21, Houston Tillotson lead here. Credit to Tabor for not letting that lead balloon after the a lid kind of went on the basket for the Blue Jays and to keep that within a couple possessions. What a man, what a pretty step back jumper from McClure. Tough to defend that. Yeah. McClure, one of two Tabor starters from the state of Texas. Though in transition here, It'd be uh, a little hesitant to go up for the slam, but Velt did not hesitate and picks up the three-point play. So Tabor retakes the lead at 26-25. I think we're in for a good one here tonight, Isaiah. Oh, yeah. So that is Holcomb back in. So again, both teams at 18 fouls here, just under seven minutes left in the first half. So foul trouble will more than likely play a factor in the second half of this one. Play a factor in the second half of this one. I think both coaches trying to kind of gauge, all right, so how tough can we play in the paint? So a valid question here is both teams have made no secret of their desire to take it to the rim. So James Aboba back in for the Blue Jays, one of two Blue Jays from across the pond, uh, hailing from the United Kingdom. So Aleem hits both free throws to give Houston Tillotson the lead at 27-26. So Coach Warren telling Crane to slow it down, to run some offense. And probably not a bad plan sometimes because this team has shown that Houston Tillotson is awfully tough to score on in the any time you try to score in transition because they're just so long and yeah. with an ability to block just about any shot from any position even. So yeah, Khalif, Khalif Aleem has really asserted himself off the bench tonight. So I think that gives him eight points now as we wait for the box score to refresh. 
Uh, yeah, really been a huge, a huge threat for the Rams off the bench. So, looks we'll have a full Tabor timeout. We'll take a break and uh, come back with a few numbers here as we uh, have 16-18 left in the first half. Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitanAgency.com. Many of you know that the Eitan Welcome back, everybody, here as we approach the final 618 here of the first half. One note here as I'm looking at the numbers, how about this? The teams have combined to shoot 17 of 18 from the free throw line. Tabor, 9 of 9, which no coach will ever be disappointed by it. Houston Tilton, 8 of 9. So teams have been very efficient when they've gotten to the free throw line. Proctor, yeah, McClure finds Proctor for the three from the top of the key. Great look. Isn't able to connect, but it will be Tabor basketball off the loose ball. Can't ask for a much better look than that from the top of the key. So I imagine Proctor will hit more of those than he misses. A, very, a high percentage shooter. We're going to get a moving screen here on the Blue Jays. And I think we're going to get a, a technical on... Is that on Tabor or Houston Tillotson? I can't quite tell. Did you catch who that was on? I did not. I think it's maybe on Khalif Aleem, it looks like, because Tabor's going to shoot the technical free throws. Offense is foul on number 13, James Aboba. Yeah, I believe that's right. So it'll be, uh, Tabor will shoot the technical free throws. Caleb Crane will get those for the Blue Jays. Perhaps something that was just said as they came back at the floor. Possibly, yeah. So it will be Rams basketball as there was a uh, a moving screen call on James Boba right before that technical foul. So that makes it a one point Ram lead here as they retake possession. And got to hand it to Houston Tillotson when uh, you miss your first seven shots. And now here in the final five minutes of the half, you're up to 43.5% shooting. That's uh, so good aggressiveness to get the looks that you want and not to hang your heads after a, a rough start. Yep. Just like we said before, Aleem has been a menace in the paint for the Blue Jays. I think that will give him 10 points here in the early going. Crane with the 18-footer and will miss, and Hallman grabs the rebound for the Rams. Jalen Williams brings the ball to the court, but that will be off the hands of Aline. Go back to the Blue Jays. I mean, all in all, pretty clean game. I have to look at the turnover numbers here, but... Subbing in for the Rams, number 13. Three turnovers for the Rams, five for the Blue Jays, but I think just two basketball teams who trying to play at their pace and um, kind of a game of runs here early on too with Tabor with the first punch but uh, Houston Tillotson countered with a, a run in a, uh, of their own to take the lead and here the Blue Jays able to keep it within a they did retake the lead briefly but able to keep it a, within a few possessions each time the Rams have uh, jumped on top of the scoreboard Nice three there from Crane in the corner. And the ball just looks good coming off his hand, doesn't it? Yeah. Smooth lefty shot. But great job there by Proctor uh, keeping his uh, 
the driving uh, ram on the baseline so he didn't get a clean look. Oh, looks like Cade Hemmert's heel was on the uh, out of bounds line. So that will be the sixth Blue Jay turnover. So all tied at 31. An interesting note here, uh, had to do a little digging to find this one uh, as I was looking to see what conference Houston Tillotson played in. Uh, they play, uh, like I said, in the Red River Athletic Conference, which also happens to be the where Xavier University of Louisiana, which is where Caleb Crane played at last year. So Caleb Crane has actually played Houston Tillotson twice. So kind of a, a random nugget I happened to come across. I was looking up stats on Crane, and I saw their logo, and I went to their league website, and I was like, wait a second. So, yeah, so he has, he has actually seen Houston Tillotson a couple times throughout his college career. Good aggressive rebound there from both. And it looks like it, it was tipped off the hands of the Rams. You know, those are the kind of nuggets we like to try to work in. And for the Rams, number 12, Cyber Pretty impressive over time. Whenever you start to play those same those same teams and those same rotations over and over again, they start to um, try to formulate a way to defend you. And Crane's uh, done a really good job tonight of uh, you know taking the lead at point guard and and making open shots, making good passes as well, moving the ball. It seems like Tabor his or uh, his teammates really trust him to run yeah. this offense and. Um, I mean, he's already played three years of college basketball, so he's got a lot of experience. Uh, before he was at Xavier University in Louisiana, he was at Redlands Community College just down in uh, Oklahoma. I forget exactly what city in Oklahoma. So, uh, again, played two years of Juco basketball, then down at Xavier, Louisiana, closer to home. So he has played a lot, a lot of minutes in his career and understandably draws the confidence of his teammates. And just like that, how about uh, the uh, backup point, point card? Creelan Avery draining a three of his own. Kind of speaks to the depth of this team when you consider Creelan Avery actually started most of the games last year and now bring, being able to bring him off the bench, he's got a nice shot. Looks like perhaps they called that a two. Isaiah, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we were not at a 31 here just a minute ago, so maybe it was not a three. I think they, yeah, it was a two. We'll have to see if they adjust the score there. But perhaps uh, Nate got a little overzealous on the PA. And his toe was on the line, but can't blame him. I want to give Nate a shout out for anyone who's been to any Tabor games this year. He's been doing the PA announcing at just about every home contest and has done a fantastic job. So yeah. if, you, if you're out at a Tabor game, go find him and tell him uh, good job because he brings a lot of energy and uh, does a great job uh, keeping the fans involved. So Avery with another three-point attempt is off. Maybe grazes the rim there just a bit, but... Ball goes out of bounds back to the Rams. We're back on for the Rams. We have number three, Con Scholes. Tabor settling in in a little bit of a 1 3 1 zone here. Maybe perhaps a 2 3. Oh, yep, we got to travel there on uh, Cormier. <laughs> oh, Nate. This is his first basketball game, so we're learning his uh, little uh, calling cards, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, no, Nate Nate did a really, really good job with the, with the fall sports over the PA. Uh, I really enjoyed listening to him during the games. Does a good job of getting the crowd uh, interacted with the games as well. Absolutely. Always like to give a shout out to those people who are quote unquote behind the scenes. So have a lot of great people in our sports information department doing a great job to bring you these games. Was that a Hallman on the basket or Chal? I, I might have missed that one. 
Looks like that was Chal, so. Houston Tillotson retakes the one point lead. Tate Hemmer drives. Man, I am no basketball coach, and I will never pretend to be, but at the rate that they're calling contact in the lane, I'd say uh, basket first. No no quick trigger from the three point line, because uh, it seems like you can get to the free throw line pretty easily here in this game. For sure, I think I think Tillotson is trying to take advantage of that fact, and, and they're driving just about every possession, um, either drawing contact or trying to get to the rim. Hemmert will hit both. So on the court for the Blue Jays right now, we have got Creelan Avery, Jack Voth, James Aboba, Kate Hemmer, and Jake Proctor. And Isaiah, I don't know if you can help us out with uh, for the Rams right now. Um, on the court for the Rams, we have number 11, Jalen Williams, number three, Con Scholl, number four, Austin Chapman, um, and number zero, Charles Holman, and number five, Tavon Anderson. There's been a lot of movement and a lot of substitution, so it's uh, yeah, been, hard both to, sides. <laughs> been hard to keep track of, but we will try to remind you as we can. A kind of a, a little bit of a circus shot there in the paint, but Tabor's able to grab the defensive rebound. If a Boba decides to try to drive it on Hallman. Oh, both with the deep three rims out. Oh. We've got a foul on Cade Hemmer there as he uh, collides with Charles Charles Hallman Charles underneath the basket. I want to take a look at the fouls here because they are definitely racking up on both sides. Yeah, if you look at the Blue Jays here, uh, now. Uh, Cade, Cade Hemmert, Aboba, Kenyon Holcomb, all with two. And on the Ram side, Tavon Anderson, I believe he might have three. But uh, everyone else just with one. So the Rams have been able to withstand it just a little bit better than the Blue Jays so far. I think any coach likes to have a point guard on the floor he can trust. And what a... What a luxury again to be able to rotate Crane and Avery. It seems like Coach yeah. Warren definitely has a, a good relationship with them both, communicating regularly when they're on the floor. So we're here under the final minute of the first half. So we get a Tabor turnover here. All tied up at 35 apiece. Again, how about this, uh, Isaiah? Again, Tabor, 13 of 13 from the free throw line here in the first half. That's a, an impressive number without question. Yeah, that's very impressive, though. Think about it, you missed five or six of those, and that's a different story here heading into the break. 100%. So keeping it a tight game here uh, gives uh, Coach Warren a lot to work with. Might, might go in like it's 0 0 at this rate. A brand new ball game here with the second 20 minutes. So. Uh, loose ball goes back to the Rams. Aleem trying to body up. Aboba, great hands by McClure there to, to uh, get the turnover. So see what happens here as the Blue Jays set their offense in the final 17 seconds. Still a shot clock, so Tabor will not be able to hold for the last basket. That ball will go to the Rams. Looks like that ball might have tipped Chapman last, but Nevertheless, it will be Rams basketball, so hard to see on the replay there. Two eager hands trying to go for the loose ball, but so the Rams will be able to hold for the last shot here in, a tie, in the tight game. There's a corner three from Jalen Williams right before the half. Crane's full three-quarter court tent is off. So that makes it 38-35, Houston Tillotson going into halftime. So we'll take a break here. 
and uh, we'll be back later with some uh, first half numbers and uh, what should be a fun second half. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. 
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and here uh, at halftime, if this face is familiar to you <laughs> as a Tabor basketball fan, it's Montel Stewart. Montel, you played here two years? Uh, three years. Three years. Three years. And then uh, worked here as a GA one year. So yep. Montel uh, works at, is going to be working at Sunrise Academy in Wichita and won't necessarily get to be at too many games this year. Yep. And fun fact is he helped put this team together. I did. I did. <laughs> so uh, uh, Coach Warren, I told him before the game we were going to bring you on for a little bit. Montel, tell us a little bit about just kind of what you've seen here in the first half. And uh kind of what you thought going in especially knowing a little bit about these guys uh what i thought going in i watched Tabor play already a couple games against ozark and Doan. Uh, i know they got a very talented team uh it's a lot different this year uh from the forward standpoint and guard aspect uh really good guards that can pass dribble pass and shoot um so i knew coming in that it'd be a battle the first it's their first home game a lot of these freshmen never played in front of like a home crowd so i knew it'd be a little a tough early on but once they settled in i thought it it went well yeah no for sure and especially i mean this is a long uh, older athletic houston tillerton team sure. a lot of a lot of transfers so yeah. you're playing against some grown men that some of these freshmen aren't used to yeah. so um tell us just a little bit about some of these start especially the starters with uh, caleb jake jack and kenyon being four new players and all new starters and uh, what these guys bring to the program man they're tremendous first and foremost they're tremendous kids before basketball players they're really good kids and that's what coach matt and the staff is we're really looking for is just really really good kids in the recruiting process jake proctor man is a stud <laughs> from heston high school we went to almost every game to recruit him big time player he's a winner 
won a lot of state championships at Heston High School. So we stayed, we we recruited him very hard in it, and it paid off, man. He's a yeah. big, he's a big time player for this for this Blue Jay squad. Jack Falt, oh man, everybody in Kansas pretty much knows his name. <laughs> he actually moved to North Carolina for a senior year. We stayed on him all the time. Went to a game, a coach map, even flew out to North Carolina to go watch him play, man. He's a stud. He's only going to keep getting better. Big time player. And correct me if I'm wrong, were they AAU teammates, Jake and Jack at Jake one point? Jake and Jack were AAU teammates. Yes, they were. So they have always had a really good relationship. I think they're roommates here as well. Cool. So that's really big. Uh, Caleb Crane is a kid that visited when first when Coach Matt Warren first got the job, but it was kind of late, so he ended up going to Xavier, Louisiana, um, which he made the tournament, played on the national tournament team. But we stayed recruiting him. Uh, we stayed up on him. His dad stayed in contact with us. So we just kept that relationship, man. He's a big-time player for this Blue Jay squad. Big upgrade from last year's at the point guard position, man. He can really defend well. He also can really control the game, and I think that's what the Blue Jays really needed going into next year, just controlling the game, being more, being a great leader and uh, controlling the tempo of the game. Well, and I, we were mentioning during the first half, you know, Kareelan Avery obviously got quite a few of the starts last year. For sure. Um, and a great player in and of itself. Yeah. What is it like as a coach when you have Caleb and Kareelan uh, rotate? I mean, two guys it seems like Matt really trusts. Uh, yeah, Matt really trusts us. Kareelan had a good freshman year. Um, we thought he was going to make honorable mention, but he didn't. But he was very solid for his last year. They both bring two different uh, things to the table. They're two different type of guards, but they both dynamic in different ways. Caleb is more of the defensive guy. He, he can create his own. Creed's more of the looking for a shot, but can get others involved as well. Two really good guards to have on your team. Uh, I think they they play well off each other when they're in the game, and I, and I think they're in good shape moving forward, man. I, I like both of them a lot. Well, yeah, you look at that starting five. It's freshman, freshman, sophomore, junior, junior. So, yep. uh, you know, obviously uh, circumstances are unknown uh, down the line for, for the future, so we don't know exactly what the future rosters will look right. like. But I think Cade Hemmer really being the only senior that's played a lot of minutes. So. He's a great leader, by the way, guys. Yeah. He's a great leader, man. I love that kid. Well, and it says a lot, too. You talk about a guy who started a lot last year yep. to understanding that the depth of this team is is bigger, is more this year. Yep. I mean, let's just call it like it, it is. Yeah, it is. And it is, it's good because everybody knows their role more, I think, this year. Last year, I think it was just guys not – really understanding their role, not saying they didn't know it wasn't defined, but I just think they didn't really know what to do when they got on the court. I think with this group, with having these dynamic freshmen and having Caleb run the show, it makes it easier on a lot of guys. Now you're getting guys that didn't get open shots last year, getting open shots because you have to guard people that can dribble pass and shoot. Yeah. So I think that's been really helpful for this year's team. Well, real quick here before we finish up, tell us a little about Kenyon Holcomb because I think if memory serves me right, excuse me, he was kind of late in the cycle. Yeah, he was late in the cycle. Um, he actually he entered the portal. I think Coach Matt Warren was just looking for another like solid backup big, and um, we didn't know what we were going to get. He came on and visited, and Coach Matt Warren, man, one of the best recruiters in the freaking <laughs> country, no matter the level, man. You get here on campus. He's going to try to seal the deal, man. He's a great coach, great recruiter, and uh, man, he, he sealed. I think Kenya uh, Holden also had Bethel. He was supposed to uh, visit Bethel the next day, but Coach Matt wrapped it up and wow. did what he had to do. He's a huge addition on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Both sides of the ball. Great rebounder. Great finisher around the rim. He was a big, big, big pickup. Yeah, especially playing D2 basketball. And, and he also played Division One at Incarnate Word. Incarnate Word, Incarnate Word yeah. down in Texas. So, yeah. uh, Montel here, right here before we finish up, how about you looking at that camera and maybe tell a few Tabor supporters, Tabor alumni about just – I don't know if you want to say thank you for your time here. Man, man yeah. thank you guys so much, Tabor College. Man, you guys mean a lot to me. Uh, once I left junior college, I started my journey here as a Blue Jay. I left here with two degrees. I'm so thankful for everybody, the people, the community, for the support. I've been through a lot here, a lot of ups and downs, but you guys stayed with me through it all, and it made me a better person. From Tabor College, I want to thank you. You guys made me who I am. I grew up a lot as a man and a player, so I'm very thankful. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, good to see you. Good seeing you, man. Yeah. Look. So, yeah, it was cool to visit with you. Hope yep. to see you at a few more games. Oh, for sure. I'm going to try to make as many as I can. I got to support my Tabor family. All right. We'll take one more break here uh, with 37 seconds here before the second half, and uh, we'll be back with a few uh, first half stats. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, yep. God.
looks like we will go just right in here into the second half. Uh, thank you for everyone for tuning in for that. Uh, Montel, just a great guy. Uh, big part of Tabor's um, tradition here. Uh, like I said, playing three years as Isaiah jumps back here on the microphone. Uh, yeah, just a really neat individual who, um, as a graduate assistant last year, had the opportunity to help recruit these guys. So we thought it would be neat to bring him on to ask him a few questions about this year's team. So Isaiah, welcome back here for what should be a fun second half, I think. Oh yeah, for sure. So, so just here as we get going, as uh, Houston Tillotson heads to the free throw line, we'll rattle off a few stats here for you. Uh, for the Blue Jays in scoring, uh, Crane and McClure both with 11, Jack Voth with seven, and Jake Proctor, Creelan Avery, and Kate Hemmert all with two. So again, for the Blue Jays, that's McClure with 11, Crane with 11, both with seven, and Jake Proctor, Creelan Avery, and Kate Hemmert all with two. And uh, on uh, Houston Till Tillotson's side, what a share a few of those numbers with everyone. Uh, we'll look at Khalif Aleem. He's leading Tillotson with 10 points. And uh, close behind him, we have Charles Hallman with nine. Um, Austin Chapman has seven points. And Tavon Anderson, Jalen Williams, and Fabian Shelton all have three apiece. Tom Shaw has two points. And Tyrell Fowler has one. Um, I think for Houston Tillotson, it looks like their their scoring is a lot more spread. Um, besides the Khalif Aleem, he's, he's in the paint a lot, um, putting some points together for them as well. Well, and actually, uh, Aleem didn't even start the first half, but I think when anytime you put up 10 points and a half off the bench, coach is going to want to ride the hot hand. And uh, he sure. picked up the second foul there, which could prove to be beneficial, honestly, because Tabor just had so few answers for him in the first half. So right. and just on that note, McClure grabs the offensive rebound uh, guarded by Aleem. So a good extra possession here for the Blue Jays. Ah, oh, just rattles right off for both. You're gonna like that look nine times out of 10, just couldn't quite knock it down. So Chapman with the corner three and he nails it. So this actually, I believe will be uh, Houston Tillotson's biggest lead at eight points. McClure tries to answer with a corner three of his own. It is long here, so ball back to the Rams. See if the Tabor can keep this here uh, under double digits. Don't want to see this lead grow too much more here in the second half. We've seen how streaky this uh, this team can be. So that is a, uh, a runner in the lane there from Joseph Formier. So a 10-point lead here as we start the second half for the Rams. So another corner three from McClure. So not exactly what we want to see here uh, for our home Blue Jays, but uh, Rams showing a lot of assertiveness offensively here uh, as we get going in the final 20 minutes. So great defense there by McClure and uh, Crane coming up from behind. So goes into the body, but we're not does not draw the foul there. So and then both comes in, great feed. Gives Caleb Crane a lot of credit there for finding both cutting through the lane. A big time basket, especially when you consider a, a 10 point deficit, being able to cut into that. Yeah, that sounds like, it looks like that was actually another foul for, for Khalif Aleem. And we certainly mentioned that name out of respect because Aleem has been a menace. Yes. For the Blue Jays. And so three fouls on him. It looks like he takes a seat. So uh, see if Tabor can maybe uh, regain its positioning in the paint a little bit with the, with him on the bench. So uh, both misses his free throw. So it's just an eight point Houston Tillotson lead and a, a great block from Kenya Holcomb, who takes the ball up in, in transition and finds Proctor. There are two great possessions here from the Blue Jays here as they stared at a 10-point deficit. So Chapman's foul at his second. So two potential three-point plays here for the Blue Jays. Proctor hits the free throw. So just like that, this game is back down to five points. You know, I... I, I 
Can't blame coach for wanting them to attack the paint. Tabor now just 2 of 14 from three. So clearly the, the shot from deep is not falling tonight. So attacking the paint will certainly prove to be worthwhile, especially when you consider you're shooting 14 of 15 from the free throw line. Yeah. Chapman's three is short, and Tabor will look to run and transition both in the lane. We'll hit McClure on the wing, and it looks like we will get a foul on Chapman, it looks like. Fouls on the Rams, number three, Con Chol. I beg your My mistake, that was on Con Chol. So Houston Tilton now with 14 fouls here as we uh, just uh, under uh, the 17 minute mark here in the, in the second half. So Tabor, again, doing any anything it can to get into the paint. And so far, it's proven to be worthwhile. Cormier gets hit with his second foul. So five team fouls. Let's take that into account. They're only two, free throw, two fouls away from free throws. So that could be a big story here in the second half. Both hits the corner three. Remember that 10 point lead we talked about, Isaiah? Yeah. It's now down just to two for Houston Tillotson. So that that uh, double digit lead evaporated quickly. Credit to Tabor for keeping its composure. Isaiah, what would you say when you look at this box score and what has been really largely an evenly played game and what you expect here in the second half? Uh, both teams, both teams, uh, have both been at, at 10 point deficits and, and went on to have nine to 10 point runs. I think uh, they've done a good job of, of just maintaining their, their composure and uh, staying even kill and it's still a really tight game. For sure, for sure. Well, it looks like we will have a full time out here, so we'll take a quick break. It will be Blue Jay basketball down by two uh, when we come back. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Some uh, solid fandom there from the students with the Blue Jay head. The retro Blue Jay head, I might add. I think that that was uh, on campus when uh, I was a little kid. So I remember seeing that when I came wow. to games. So a good look there from the student section. Got to get a few more of them on their feet, though. So Tabor ball here. And Holcomb with the clean look right out of the break. And just like that, it is a tight game at 45 apiece. So Houston Tillotson's probably looking at this wondering what happened because that was quick. Mm -hmm. But again, credit to Tabor. When they went down by 10, they attacked, drew two fouls, and then uh, were able to cut this down fast. So brand new ball game here with 15.45 remaining. 45-45, 15.45. So Chaw will inbounds here to Austin Chapman. A great nightcap here to the first day of the Tabor College Classic. And it just seems like whenever, whenever Tabor's been able to get them into a half court offense, it's worked in their favor. Hence a shot clock violation, so. They, uh, no announcer jinx there on the commentary. I was a little worried that I might lead to an, uh, a good basket, but yeah, anytime Tabor's gotten Houston Tillotson to run a half court offense, it seems like their defense has handled it well. So keeping them out of transition definitely will be key. So 
So Tabor ball here, see if they can retake a lead. Here as we uh, drop under 15 minutes to play here. Proctor thought about a three from the wing, drive and kicks it out to McClure in the corner. Just McClure, normally a pretty sure-handed three-point shooter, just hasn't been able to find his touch tonight. Uh, like we mentioned early in tonight's game, McClure shot 42% from three as a freshman and uh, was a really, just a key cog for the Blue Jays last year. James Abova. So Bova will pick up, James Abova that is, will pick up his third foul as Houston Tillotson will step to the line. Number 13, Joseph Cormier, two. It's probably, Isaiah, this is probably a little crazy for me to say this given how exhausted I'd be if I was playing this game, but it seems like fatigue might be kind of coming into play here. Uh, a few more hands on hips here in the second half. Yeah, a little bit so. It's been a been a really fast-paced game from the jump, and they really haven't let down at all. No, absolutely. So I, you're still a college athlete, so you could probably hold your own out there, but <laughs> <laughs> I would be done one time up and down the floor. I have no shame in admitting that. But let's see. Tabor, again, has tried to get their three-point shooting going. It just has not been their night, so I'm sure they will look – to try to get back into the paint as that has absolutely worked in their favor. And hey, that's when you want to be wrong as an announcer. So credit to James Abelba there for taking a clean look. And uh, hey, thank you to uh, our viewership tonight. It sounds like we got 140 of you watching tonight. What has been a great basketball game. So as Fabian Shelton answers James Aboba's three. So just a terrific night of basketball and the treating all of our home fans here and to you at home as well. So let us know maybe if uh, where you're watching from and we'll give you a shout out here if we can. No promises, but like it when we can uh, bring in a, a nice broadcast here as we start the home slate. Coming, for the Rams, five, Coming on for the Rams, we have number five, Tavon Anderson. So for Tabor fans who might just be tuning in, we'll save this as we see if Tabor can score. Oh, they draw a foul right as the shot clock expires. I think you timed it perfectly. Yeah, what do you think? Foul. <laughs> foul. So Jack Voth will step to the line for two here. Definitely drew contact there. Probably a possession Shelton would like to have back because it was kind of an out of control shot, but uh, he's able to draw the contact. So uh, again, just for, like I mentioned, for Tabor fans who might be tuning in for the first time this season, lots of new faces again here for the Blue Jays in 2023. Uh, just in the starting lineup alone, which it looks like uh, minus a Boba, we've got all the four other starters on the floor right now. Um, at the free throw line, Jack Voth, a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, slash Bueller, Kansas. He might claim both. I would think he would. Um, and then uh, we've got Jake Proctor and Creelan Avery in the backcourt. Uh, Proctor, a freshman from Heston. Creelan Avery is a returning point guard from Lubbock, Texas. Thatcher McClure, a sophomore from McKinney, Texas. So. A mix of some new bodies, but a few who are back from Coach Matt Warren's first year. So I think for anyone who watched last year, we're, Tabor's certainly able to rotate more bodies than they did last year, which hopefully will lead to some fresher legs deep, later into the season. Jake Proctor bringing the ball up the court. Looks like we're going to get Anderson with an elbow here, I think, to the back. Anyone who calls Central Kansas home has heard the name Jake Proctor. Proctor, by the way, not just a fantastic basketball player. He was a two-time All-State football player and a three-time All-State basketball selection and a three-time state champion in basketball. So um, just a, another, I mean, anytime you can bring in someone like that as a freshman, I mean, the sky's the limit for what he'll bring to this program as we move forward. Cade Come in for the Jays, we have number 11, Cade Hemmert. Okay. 
I work in uh, the communications office here at Tabor, and when they were taking their media photos before the season, there was a really funny photo of Cade standing. He, he's an education major, a little fun fact there, um, standing in front of his teammates and every, all of them sitting down like they're little kids in a preschool class, just looking up at Cade with their with uh, their hands on their on their face. And it was just kind of shows the fun they like to have, but also the respect they have for Cade as one of their, the leaders of this team. So they certainly like to have fun. And and uh, you can see the cohesion, still a work in progress, but this, this team will certainly looks like it enjoys playing with each other here, only in game number three. That three from Conchal will give Houston Tillotson the lead. I don't know about you, Isaiah, but this feels like the odds of this lead growing more than four to six for either team feels pretty unlikely at this point from here on out. No, it's it's toe to toe. What a good drive there. Good drive there from Jackson Bear, but just unable to finish over the uh, long arms of Charles Hallman. And just like that, Joseph Cormier hits a three of his own and it is back out to a uh, five point Houston Tillotson lead. We'll see if uh, Tabor can test my theory here to see if this game won't grow back to past five or six points. Looks like they're gonna say that went off of Kate Hemmert's toe. So just as uh, for those who weren't able to join us from the start, Houston Tillotson's actually looking for its first win of the year. They lost their first three games. Uh, one, their season over just by three. Others a little bit uh, bigger deficit. So tonight, I think no team wants to start 0-4. It's a, a bit of a hole to jump, climb out of. It's a long season, but uh, getting that first win is big for anybody. So I'm sure there's a little extra oomph in their step to try to get win number one for sure. Abobo with the jumper and connects. And Houston Tilton is not afraid to let it fly. So Bear is able to reel to corral that loose ball and Looks like we're going to get a foul on Chapman, so that will send Tabor to the line. So, a reminder, that's actually foul team foul Rams number eight for the Rams here with 10.42 left. So, any foul here, minus a player control foul, will send uh, Tabor to the line. Coming back off of the Rams, we have number 22, Khalid Kalimini. Coming off of the Blue Jays, we have number 15, Kenny Holcomb. Second free throw rattles out, so that will remain a two-point Rams lead. You know, I, I sent an email to Coach Warren before tonight's game to just kind of ask him for some thoughts going into this matchup. He talked a lot about this length and athleticism of the Rams being uh, something that they're going to have to withstand, but also just kind of some of the energy and excitement of playing your first game at home, which I think both things have certainly come into play. So coach having a couple of uh, uh, notable key uh, factors in this game so both times that the Houston Tillotson's been able to build a lead Tabor has uh, been able to answer so it looks like we will go back to the line so yes only 10 one left in the game but with as many trips to the free throw line as we're probably gonna see I think we can uh, add a few minutes to that number Really one Tabor through its first two games, uh, one, winning at College of the Ozarks uh, near Branson, Missouri, in their season opener, 80 to 67. And then on November 1st, they traveled to Doan University and got a big road win um, against a, a formidable opponent up in the G-Pack, uh, a game where actually Tabor trailed 
a fair amount, especially in the first half. And to come back and win that game in overtime on the road is, I mean, game two is certainly an accomplishment. So Tabor trying to keep its record perfect here in game number three. Good job there by Avery to sink those free throws. And again, that free throw shooting, if you look at the number here, Isaiah, 19 to 23. So numbers fallen just a bit, but 82% is nothing to hang your head about. Right. I mean, shooting, I mean, you look at the scoreboard and um, the, the tight game speaks for itself in the, in, on the stat sheet when Houston Tilton right at 40% shooting, Tabor at 40.5. So a very evenly matched game here tonight. Kate Hemmer trying to find McClure, but he misses. And Chapman going for the dunk. I think looked like he maybe was looking for the highlight dunk, but chose to get the easy two. And any turnover for the Blue Jays has been costly because they like to get out and run and they are get to the other end quickly. And just like that, we have a, another Tabor, or Tabor turnover. So an unwelcome sight here. A little surprised Coach Henderson telling them to slow their offense down a little bit. Could be just a uh, endurance play there, but um, they have had their way with Tabor in transition. So Conchal hits the jumper to push Houston Tillotson's lead back to six. Houston Tillotson out of Austin, Texas, and uh, a member of the Red River Athletic Conference making the trip up here to Hillsborough tonight. Jack both buries a three. A needed shot there as Houston Tillotson was building its lead back. And just like that, here comes another three. Man, their three-point shot has looked good tonight. Yeah, just whenever you think either side has, has a lead, the other, the other team answers. Good take by Holcomb, just unable to finish. I think we're gonna get a travel there on Khalif Aleem. And he knows it. He had a chance, I think, for a little highlight play of his own, but got a little stutter step. So looks like we are going to have a timeout here, a full timeout. 64 58 with seven a uh, houston tillotson leading 64 58 with 737 remaining we will be right back after a word from our sponsors At Baumgars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need when you Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Hillsboro Ford. Crane, what an excellent cut to the rim. A great play out of the out of the timeout here to cut it back to four. So 
they're making me look smarter than I am so far, which I think no team has built a lead bigger than six here in the second half. And those open looks have killed Tabor. And yet again, Austin Chapman buries the three. So we got to Tabor definitely our uh, home Blue Jays here need to get a hand up on those shots because they have been lethal when they have been left alone. That's now actually seven of 11 from three for, for the Rams. So both trying to drive the lane, but it's met by two defenders. McClure with a short jumper and connects. With just six and a half minutes remaining, so getting down to the nitty gritty here where just about any run could prove to be costly from here on out. Wow, gotta hand it to Cormier there to finish through the contact. Just of note, I've re seen here that um, Houston Tillotson has now hit a season high in scoring with 619 remaining. It's good on them. Still got about six minutes remaining. So now back to an eight point lead. Tabor was able to answer early in the second half when Houston Tillotson's lead grew to 10. But Proctor misses on the three from the wing. Chaw puts up the three. That three, Coach Henderson did not like, and for obvious reason. So, oh, we're. Proctor tries to go up through contact. They do not call the foul, and Chapman in the open court will get another dunk to push this one back to 10. So transition hurting the Blue Jays yet again with the Rams running the open floor. So we will have another full timeout. We will take a quick break and be back with you here in just a minute. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Some of our workers here tonight who have been working all day as there are four games a day here in the Tabor College Classic. First off, we want to thank Athletic Director and Site Administrator David Ediger for helping facilitate today's tournament. But our sports information staff, uh, you can be seen up and down the scores table with Nate Howard, uh, a GA in sports information handling PA duties. David Loomis, our sports information director, working uh, with stats with Alicia Lopez and Allison Christ. Uh, just a, a full team effort here um, as uh, we bring you tonight's game. So it's uh, definitely not a one-man show with these broadcasts. A lot of hands go in to bringing these broadcasts each and every night. Nice job from McClure, finishing through contact. I want to thank our workers in the studio. Uh, just a lot of people who do some great things to bring these games. So, man, we talked about it at the timeout, and yet again, that open three just can't happen at this point. And right off the turnover, we'll see if they attack, and they do. But a great, great hands from uh, Crane and tries to run up and floor. Oh, Holcomb, good job. Good job getting the loose ball, just unable to finish under the rim. So it looks like we are going to get a charge. You know, I think Coach uh, Henderson there, you're looking at that crane, was standing there for two seconds before he made contact. Say, 
How about uh, go make going around the contact? Because that was a pretty easy charge call. And I think, too, when you look at an 11 point Houston Tillotson lead, they really, with only four and a half minutes to go, they don't need to play with quite as much aggression and to keep the ball out of the Blue Jays' hands. So probably slow it down a little bit more, get those open looks that have just killed Tabor. Man, Austin Chapman has been everywhere. Chapman, I think, has hit a number of these threes. Yeah, he's a game, no wonder, game high 20 points there for the junior from Houston, Texas. A needed three from Tabor is off, but we're looks like they're going to hit Fabian Shelton with the, the foul on Kenyon Holcomb. Houston Tillotson foul number 23, Fabian Shelton, his third. So these free throws will be critical as we go hit the four-minute mark here in the second half. Yeah, unfortunately just short. So Isaiah, as you look at the 4 four oh five on the clock, 11 point deficit. I mean, maybe it's simplifying it too much, but it seems like getting a hand up on the open three and keeping these guys out of transition right. is gotta be item 1A and 1B for Tabor here if they try to, if they wanna cut into this deficit. Right, if I'm remembering correctly, a uh, majority of those threes that uh, Tillotson has been able to sink, uh, they've, they've not been contested very well, if at all. No. Not at all. So just Tabor's fourth team foul, so a few more fouls to give before Houston Tillotson will head to the free throw line. I think we're going to get a moving screen here on Cormier. That is his fourth. So I think he is the first player to hit foul number four. No, uh, excuse me, Taylon Anderson also with four. So empty possessions are not really what Tabor can afford at this point. We're under four minutes left. Crane is doing what he can against Chapman but uh, is able to keep the loose ball and Tabor will maintain possession with a, a 30 second timeout. So we'll step aside here real quick and uh, be back with uh, the final 333. Hillsboro Ford is your local family owned and operated full service Ford dealer serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open. We are back here from Tabor College for the final 333 of tonight's nightcap between the host Blue Jays and the Houston Tillotson Rams. Once we get under a minute, we'll talk a little bit about the games that are coming up tomorrow. Great take there by Jack Boat. Baskets and stopping the clock will certainly be of Tabor's friend here. That hard hitting analysis there for you. Nice so, job by both sinking that free throw as well. Yeah, getting this back to eight, which keeping this under double digits, you're gonna feel like you're a stop away from from uh, making this uh, anybody's game. So gotta have the Hit a body on the defensive glass and the no second chance opportunities for a team that has also hurt Tabor when they've gotten their, those second chances. So a hard shot in the lane. Proc, great job by Proctor, honestly, to kind of cover that loose ball. And, uh, oh, whoop. <laughs> and McClure kind of tricked me, but ends up losing it. Unfortunate there, a, uh, 
on uh, the Tabor turnover. So probably a victim of trying to do a little bit too much there. Fouls on the Blue Jays, number four, Jake Proctor. That's his fourth. Looks like that foul is going to be on number four, Jake Proctor, on, bringing him two. to four on Call the night. So just a quick look at some of the games that will be coming up tomorrow. I do not have those game times right in front of me. However, I can tell you, I do know Tabor's game times. I, I, I can't give you that. If uh, anybody from Bethany or USAO or uh, University of Health and Sciences and Pharmacy in St. Louis is watching, um, I can tell you your opponent. So University of Health, Sciences and Pharmacy in St. Louis will face the Bethany College Swede women tomorrow. Whereas the University of Science and Arts in Oklahoma will be playing the host Blue Jays at 3 o'clock. So for the Tabor women, their final game of the tournament will be at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Certainly would love to see you here if you can make it uh, for that game. And then the men will follow where the Blue Jays will face Missouri Valley College. So again, for Tabor at 3 o'clock, that is the women against the University of Science and Arts. The game will be brought to you on live stream. And uh, then the men will face Missouri Valley College. And no second chance. Can't Maybe have them here. Help. Now we're under two minutes, and it's an 11-point game. So Tabor's going to need a few things to fall their way, and a three does not hurt. <laughs> so Caleb Train buries the three from the top of the key, and Tabor will take a timeout here as they've cut it back to eight with 147 left. Take a quick break and we will be back with you. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for... We're back with a final 147 here as Tabor needs quick defensive possessions and zero second chance opportunities for the Rams. A good corner trap, but they were able to get out of it. Looked like Williams maybe st stepped out, but the ref right there says no. Looks like we will get Crane here. That will be Tabor's 17 foul. So uh, Houston Tillotson will be hitting the one and one. That's his third. 17. That is Crane's third. That certainly helps. So a missed front end on the one and one. Tabor needs a this. Needs to avoid these empty possessions. A good look in the paint, maybe drawing a foul. Stopping the clock would certainly be appetizing, if you will. That three by McClure, man, just a tough night shooting for Thatcher. Fellas on Taker's number 15, Kenyon Holcomb. His third, team eight. That is Kenyon Holcomb's third. Foul and Jalen Williams will step to the line for one and one. So Tabor will able to foul one more time before Houston Tillotson hits a double bonus. What do you think here, Isaiah? Does Tabor have one more run left in him? I think so. I think they I think they, they have to. Gotta hand it to Houston Tillotson here. 
they have been able to play some pretty good defense here, uh, forcing uh, a fair amount of Tabor turnovers. I don't have the second half turnover numbers in front of me, but uh, they, their defense has definitely been the story here over the final six minutes. So we'll take a quick break here as Houston Tillotson takes a 36 second timeout. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. We are back, Tabor ball here, trailing by 10. Crane beats his defender up the floor and will go immediately to the basket and will head to the line for two free throws. <laughs> Coach Henderson saying, uh, defense, uh, get back. That's the uh, slightly uh, shorter version of what was shared. Crane wasting no time getting to the rim right there. I mean, what was that? Five seconds, maybe. maybe. That is uh, not going to work in their favor. I mean, you take only five seconds off the clock, get to the line for two free throws. So great job by Crane understanding the situation. I imagine we'll see that another time or two here over the final 71 seconds of tonight's game. Crane, a junior transfer from Xavier University of Louisiana. His first year as a Blue Jay. Those missed free throws are no bueno. So, um, yeah, again, uh, product uh, Simsboro, Simsboro, Louisiana, playing his college ball last year near home, and then also was at Redlands Community College in Oklahoma before that. And as you maybe heard over halftime, Montel Stewart, a former Tabor GA, sharing that. Uh, Caleb actually recruited by Tabor twice out of Redlands and then also last year when he chose to transfer, connecting with Tabor yet again. So Tabor trying to foul here, obviously needing to, trailing by 10 with now 55 and a half seconds left. That was on Tabor number three, Green and Avery, his second team night. Joseph Cormier shooting one and one. Joseph Cormier stepping to the line for one and one, and he hits the first. So back to an 11 point Houston Tillotson lead. I can't say for certain who will be bringing the women, Tabor women's game tomorrow, but I do know that the gentleman beside me, uh, Mr. Isaiah Cohen's, will be a part of the broadcast for Tabor's game against Missouri Valley, and so you will be in good hands. Yeah, I think I think for tomorrow's game, the Blue Jays definitely after after tonight need to just go back to the drawing board and, and figure out what they need to do both defensively and offensively to uh, just be a little bit more consistent uh, from start to finish. Definitely have their spurts. I mean, yeah. you open up an 11 to one lead at yeah. the start of the game. You like that, but just maybe showing some of that youth perhaps uh, when as a Houston Tillotson um, climb back into this one. I mean, it's really impressive when you look at it uh, with Houston Tillotson, you know, from this lineup, it's almost all transfers. So a lot of guys who have played a lot of college basketball, James Harrison, um, Jr., Fabian Shelton, Jr., Austin Chapman, Jr., Khalifa Leem, Jr., uh, Shannon Robinson, sophomore, Conchal, Jr. Um, so just a lot of experience. I mean, you just go right down the list. So, uh, in fact, only one freshman on the entire roster. Wow. Well, and the KCAC has its share of uh, good big men who can uh, uh, stretch the floor. 
you look at any of the top teams in the conference. So this will be a good test as they prepare for the likes of Kansas Wesleyan, Southwestern, Oklahoma Wesleyan, and uh, Evangel, uh, and I mean the, just, just to name four. I mean the the KCAC, like we said earlier in tonight's game, just seems to get deeper by the year. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think post COVID, just sports across the board, uh, college sports have gotten deeper. Um, you know, with with athletes getting an extra year eligibility, and then also them being a little more lenient on the uh, transfer portal and the introduction of that, uh, it's made a competition in college sports really, really deep, and it's made it difficult for freshmen to come in and play whenever a coach can just go and grab a transfer from another school that has already had experience. Absolutely, I mean, you're seeing I think Houston Tillotson reaping the benefits of that here tonight with just so much experience, and you think. You look at it, and that experience definitely showed here in the second half. And I think when you look at it, too, you think college basketball, for example, at the Division One level, you know, there's over 300 Division One schools. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the sheer number of players who enter the port transfer portal every year, you know, gradually you're going to see the players who maybe don't find the spot at that level start going D2 and uh, just kind of working their way down. So I think the quality of the game has just gotten stronger at every level. Definitely. <laughs> Nice drive there by Cray. We may not see Division One transfers up, uh, here in the in the KCAC, but you look at it. I mean, we have a num we have a handful of D two transfers in this game, and uh, a lot of guys have, from the junior college level who have played against some. Um, I mean, without knowing the history of any of these guys, much beyond tonight's game, I'm sure a lot of them have played against some fantastic basketball players in their career. Right. I think any time you come from some place like the Houston Metro, I mean, they've probably seen their share of, of talented basketball. Like you talked about earlier, Texas is full of talented basketball players, football players, you name it, and many of them who don't have to go too far from home. So we are going to see the final seconds tick away here and what will be an 84-73 to 73 Houston Tillotson win. Just a few numbers here as the final seconds uh, tick off, uh, tick down on the clock. So Austin Chapman leading Houston Tillotson in scoring here in their first win of the season with 20. Joseph Cormier with 17. Charles Hallman with 15. Khalifa Lean with 10. And for the Blue Jays, Ch Jack Voth with 18. Caleb Crane with 17. Thatcher McClure with 15. So um, a great offensive night. Just a few too many open looks for the for the Rams, give them the win here in the nightcap. So just quickly before we sign off, again, if you're a Tabor fan, we'd love to see you here tomorrow. If you can make it in person, the women play the University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma at three. The men will face Missouri Valley College at five. So they play back to back. The both games will be available via the live stream, but we certainly would love to see you here and uh, to give us another full gym here in Hillsboro. So for one last time, uh, it's Adam Suderman and Isaiah Cohen's. Isaiah, thank you for a great night here on night one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. So we'll, we'll sign off and uh, hope you guys have a great evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again here soon. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off at fifth.